And we are back with Pokemon Shining Pearl Any Percent by Nerd Squared. And of course, joined by Aspect on commentary. Hello, I'm back. Yep. Uh, it seems we have a little bit of an issue, though. Um, nerd, are you okay? Like, is your switch doing okay? Because it seems like you just have an error. <laughs> Yeah, this is the uh, Switch crash screen. Hopefully we're not going to see this too much. <laughs> That's a bit of a preview as to what could happen if this run goes wrong. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, Shining Pearl. Uh, this is going to be a glitched run. Uh, if you saw the run TFAT did yesterday, uh, he did glitchless on the Brilliant Diamond side. Here we're going to do exactly not that. Uh, we are going to break the game, or I'm going to break the game pretty heavily. Uh, and it's all due to, well, we'll get into it during the intro, but it's basically due to the fact that I'm playing on down patch version of the game, and there's some exclusive glitches there. It all stems from a single glitch, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get into it during the intro. Uh, so time starts here, when I select yes on the language selection. So, three, two, one, go. Okay. So that glitch we refer to at the beginning, uh, it's something called menu storage. It has to do with a really strange quirk on this patch of the game and 1.1.0, where if you do a quick double tap of the confirm button, which is either Z, L, Z, R, or A, because all those registers in A press, um, you can duplicate the menu because the game does not recognize those inputs fast enough. And you can effectively uh, uh, back out of that, uh, have a menu up while you have control of your character. Uh, because when you back out of a menu, the game thinks, hey, you're back in the gameplay state. Let's give you some, let's give you back control, bud. So with that, with the ability to move around with this menu overlaid on the screen, uh, you can do a whole bunch of different things. It's a, it basically opened the Pandora's box for breaking this game as bad as we do. Yeah, it breaks the game so much that we've actually had multiple different category extensions added that limit how much we can actually do with, with that glitch. Yeah. Yeah, this category being the most extreme version of that. Because like, it's weird. It, this is the first Pokemon game in over a decade to be this broken, just to put that into perspective. Like, the last Pokemon game that was this broken was Gen 4. With the uh, Heart yep. Gold Soul Silver being the last one, there were some minor breaks here and there, uh, like in Gen Five. There's that Rock Clip in Bryson's gym, but not much else. Outside yeah, it's of that. a single rock that you can get through. Yeah, it just doesn't have collision. And yeah, like Nerds said, um, it's only on two individual patches of the game. The original release patch, uh, 1.0.0, does not have this glitch. So something went wrong when they were fixing something, uh, and this glitch was uh, was a result of it. <laughs> One of those things where Dev tries to introduce a fix to a game, and they, just, and they just break it even more in the process. So this part is pretty straightforward. We're just coming up to get our starter, the usual stick with the beginning of these games, but it's going to be a little different from Glitchless, uh, because in the Glitchless run, you saw T-Pat pick a uh, Chimchar. But here we're going to pick Turtwig. Uh, part of it is a legacy thing, because with a different route where we did a lot more of the game than what you're about to see, uh, we would do a few extra battles, and Turtwig doesn't evolve the route. So... Uh, 18. Yeah, 18. And the, ba the extra battles we would fight would get us to around 14. Uh, but the actual reason we pick him for this category, with where it is now, is because it has the highest chance of defeating this fight in two turns. And this fight, it's basically the final boss of this category, because, as you might expect, it's very um, luck-dependent with how fast it goes, because whether or not you're able to two-shot it depends on uh, multiple factors, like the Turtwig's attack, at the start of the crits, at the start of the sites, so we meet a meanie and use growl. All that, all that factors in. So, for being the very first fight in the game, where it's a pretty easy fight against a bird, it's actually a pretty big reset point. 
This one actually got pretty good hits there. I went a, hit a little low oh, on the first wow. one, and I got a high roll yeah. on the second one, which is nice. Alright, so we're going to do the first instance of menu storage in just a second. I might have to concentrate for it a little bit because it does involve a bit of audio cues. I have to listen kind of closely to hear the menu clicks to confirm that I got menu storage. But what I'm effectively going to do is uh, get a stack of menu storage up. And I'm going to cancel out of it during the cutscene with Mom when, where we get the running shoes. So I'm going to Yeah, so we're going to stack up two levels of, of, of menus. Yeah. There we go, we just got the first layer. So as I said, when you back out of a menu, the game thinks, hey, you're in a gameplay state. So we are moving around just there, even though you probably didn't see it, uh, even though we have clearly have a menu up. And then I'm going to set up the second layer of this during the cutscene with Mom. Because when you go into a house, or a building like our mom's house, there's an animation that plays where you enter the door. We're going to break out of that with this menu stack. And it causes some very fun things to happen. Yeah, uh, so basically, uh, when you uh, enter a door, it stops you from moving. When you close a menu, it lets you move again. Yep. Oh, that might have been a bit early. Nope, that was just fine. All right. You can do a bit of an optimized setup for that uh, door storage, as it's called, where you can just clip through the house, which I got there. So yeah, w because we broke out of the cutscene, the world is in this weird frozen state. So there's Lucas. And there's Lucas's clone. Uh, when you break out of that cutscene, the entire world freezes. So you can't get encounters at all, and every single NPC in the world can't see you. So you can just go straight to Jubilife. And uh, not to mess with the Pokédex or the Pokéballs at all. We don't need them. Yeah, the only downside to um, freezing the world like that is that you do need a way to unfreeze the world afterwards. Hmm. Um, because we don't have any key items, we can't utilize that. Um, so we have to, to save and quit. Yeah, we are just about to get a key item, though, which is going to be the old rod. Some other glitch categories, as Aspect was mentioning with category extensions, you can do some pretty interesting things with key items. Uh, in particular, with the Explorer kit, you can cancel it with menu storage to levitate in the air, which is always a fun time. Yeah, it gives you a temporary form of levitation. Speaking of which, this big set of menu stacks we're about to do is going to give us a similar effect. Uh, on this patch of the game, this is the old rod by the way, uh, on this patch of the game, the GWS future was not fully finished. Uh, so there's this lady in town that's supposed to activate it, but if you try to talk to her, she says, Hey, the GWS isn't ready yet. Uh, and then you, she pushes you to the right. Uh, and I'm going to basically try to store that to have the animation play as I go over a ledge to uh, make myself levitate. Call it ledge tape. And... Oh. See, that's what I was talking about with having to listen to the menu clicks. There we go. You have to press the buttons pretty close to each other to actually duplicate the menu. So it's not too tight, but it is kind of hard to get used to. Yeah, you get the rhythm into the rhythm of it pretty quickly. Yeah. So I'll stack a few menus here. Uh, this will just let me store that text from the GWS lady. Uh, You'll see ready. here, different to the door storage we did earlier, we're actually stacking the menus underneath this top level. Um, we're yeah. doing that by opening by uh, pressing X or the the plus button. Um, at the same time as we're closing out of a, a screen. Um, this just lets us have vision while doing these uh, these glitches, which makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah, because as you might imagine, some of these menu glitches are very hard. Like, there's even some I'm not doing that I would do in a PB attempt, just because they're extremely risky. A lot of these menu stacking steps can crash or softlock the game if you're not careful. So we'll just stack one main menu there, and then do another storage. Because we're going to do a similar thing to what we just did with Legitate. But we're going to take that all the way out of bounds here. Because we're going to go out of bounds with the site that we just got just stored from Levitating. 
and we're out in the void. Yeah, we're going for a little walk. Yeah, just a casual stroll through the void. No biggie. And this void walk is actually kind of difficult. I might have to concentrate for the later bits of this because it involves very particular uh, timing cues. Uh, and we have to go off with timing cues specifically because obviously it's pitch black, so you can't really see where you are properly. Uh, so you have to go yeah. off with timing cues instead. There is an easier version of it that involves wonking a lot, um, but it does uh, cost a lot more time. Yeah. Uh, so if you just get these these timing cues correctly, then uh, it's a lot it's a lot faster. Yeah, and even if I do get the path correctly, there's still a chance that it doesn't work. Because the window at the end of this movement path to be able to get into the Pokemon League, which is where we're trying to go with this, is very particular. And if you don't get it, you soft lock. <laughs> yeah, you need to get you need to um, glitch or you need to uh, get pushed back in bounds in the correct place. There's a couple of places too high or too low where if you glitch in, um, you're gonna just get stuck there. Um, oh, you're bonking there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is my safe strat that I like to use as well. I'll bonk okay. on basically it's the top of Route Two Twelve. Um, you can then walk directly uh, across to the Pokemon League. You go about eleven steps up, um, and then you'll uh, get in bounds in the correct place. I'm a little unsure because I lost kind of where I was once I stop going up there, so I'm just gonna yell this last part and hope I make it. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so I do a bit, of, a bit of a wiggle movement right there you might have saw when I went down right, just to hopefully ensure that I get this. I did lose track of where I was there, but it should be fine. We'll see. <laughs> okay, we're in the league. That's a good sign. Now the only question so is where? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I didn't hear, I, I couldn't quite hear because I had headphones on, but I don't think I heard grass there, so I might be on the lower ledge or on one of the trees higher up. We'll see. I hope that I got it so I don't have to load it back up. <laughs> yeah, so the game takes a very long time to load it, and it takes about 30 seconds all up. Yeah. Very fun to deal with, especially when you mess one of these up. <laughs> Please don't be in a bad spot. Okay, perfect. We're in. <laughs> so we can just nice. go right into the league and don't have to worry about doing all the shenanigans that Glitchless Run did where we have to get all the gym badges. But now we need to get past our rival. Yeah, how are we going to do that? Uh, because we would get destroyed, you might ask. Uh, do it with uh, another menu stack. Okay. Old versions of the route used to uh, get polka dolls. Soft locks. I missed one of oh. the menus. I, I missed you one of the stores. So I only had one stack. <laughs> yeah, so old versions of the of the run. We didn't know about this, so um, we would get polka dolls instead. And you can use a polka doll using a, a, the top menu uh, to skip a trainer. Yeah. But still have the, the game progress. Apart from there's five trainers that we know of that can't be skipped that way. Yeah. Yeah, we can't do the we can't do the Polka Doll skip anymore because this route only goes up to Jubilee in terms of story progression, so we can't quite go to where Polka Dolls are sold. There we go. That's what's supposed to happen. So I did a menu stack there to clip through the escalator. So I can go behind this door. Because right behind that door is a gigantic collision box. It's basically the size of that little doorway there. And that would prevent you from going to the door normally, but if you save in that particular area at the top of the invisible box, you clip into it. So that lets us avoid our rival. But again, you might ask, how are you going to defeat the Elite Four? You only have, you only have a level 5 Turtwig. Answer, more menu stacks. <laughs> we don't have polka dolls, we don't have ball capsules, which also work nope. for skipping fights. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, we interrupted some animations before. We're gonna just utilize that again. Yeah. And it's pretty bizarre when you first see it. Uh, when you enter an Elite Four member's room, we're basically gonna do that same. Uh, we're gonna store that animation, this menu stack. And it is a very particular window. There we go. Getting each of those menus or animation storages is a three frame window. So it's very, very tight. So I'm definitely going to save before each of these, just in case I mess up. Yeah, so basically, when we um, utilize, when we use the uh, the first level of uh, of the menu stack, it interrupts the animation. Uh, we have the menu underneath it to make sure it's interrupting it. That's uh, how uh, how the oak text gets interrupted, which freezes the world. And then we unfreeze the world by having the text come back up by using the uh, the other uh, key item menu. Yeah, and that lets the animation. Which, uh, yeah. Lets the animation continue, pushes us through the door, or yeah. the wall in this case. Yep. And uh, you'll see if you ever look at the uh, top level any percent runs. Uh, instead of doing each stack individually, they'll end up doing what's called double storage by putting two levels of storage up. And then you only then keeping that bottom level storage, it just cuts out a whole bunch of menus. Yeah, the tricky thing though is that it does involve quite basically blind movement for three minutes straight, so it's yeah. very very difficult. There's a good reason that only the top three runners do it. <laughs> See, I'll do one more storage ship to get past uh, Lucian. I believe you just got past Flint. Yeah, we just got past Flint. Yeah. And this, we're gonna skip Cynthia in a similar manner, but the way we do it is a little different. Pretty hilarious. Thankfully, it's not as complicated as doing all this door storage stuff. Yeah, Oak just sort of bursts into the room and interrupts her. <laughs> yeah, basically. Alright, so we just got past Lucian. Uh, thankfully, the setup for this is a lot simpler. Instead of doing all that uh, key item, regular menu key item, we're gonna do one key item. We would normally do a different setup for runs, but doing this for a comedic effect. So I'm gonna go into Cynthia's room, and then in the middle of the cutscene, I'm going to use the old run. And now we're free. Hey, Cynthia. How's it going? <laughs> and I'll store one more old run. This will let me skip some cutscenes once I get to the top of this elevator that's behind her. Just have time for it. Oh, whoops, not quite like that. There we go. I like how you're just stuck there in the room and Cynthia's intro music is just playing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and I did Yeah, we're walking too slow there, so we're just gonna gonna interrupt that. Yeah. Yeah, I did that second old run there to skip some cutscenes in the Hall of Fame. And unfortunately you can't skip the second half of the cutscenes here because <laughs> that would soft lock you. So fortunately we can't skip that. The time ends on the Fate to Black after we get in, uh, put into the Hall of Fame with our level 5 Turtwig. Yep. Did a good job. Or actually, you know what this run is? It's basically Turtwig that wins by doing absolutely nothing. Hey, he's the entire reason that we're able to stack menus. He did True. everything. True, fine. See, that was, that was the Pokemon per Shining Pearl speedrun abridged version. <laughs> With 100% uh, more Void. Yeah, it's funny actually that the Void exists in this game because Ilka, or ILCA, uh, when they were making this, they said they wanted to make as fateful a remake as possible. And they, I think well, they took that far. <laughs> a lot of the code ended up being taken from Gen 4. Yeah, I think actually it's literally 
the, the exact same, just under a rendering layer. The only difference is that the uh, the matrixes for the um, interior of buildings are all individual, rather than one big map, like the overworld is, uh, which Gen 4 didn't have. Gen 4 had one big uh, matrix, which is why you could um, go straight to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, uh, what was the time for that, by the way? Because I feel like that was close to around 17 minutes, given that uh, goof on the old paper track. That, that was a 1754, if my timing is correct. May have been a little bit <laughs> late I didn't on beat the, the time there. I didn't beat the GDQ run, darn it. It's okay. <laughs> I was off by 20 seconds. I probably would have gotten sub-17 if it wasn't for that goof on the escalator trick because i messed it up which lost 20 and then it's reload which costs 30. it's all good that was really fun to watch i yeah. actually haven't fully seen a um a any percent glitched run yet so that was yeah. really fun to watch and really listen to thank mm. you for that that was awesome yeah. and bear in mind this current route that we're using was found within a week of the game coming out yeah that's even more amazing <laughs> It was really fun to be a part of the, the routing process because every single day you'd wake up to about a, a thousand messages in the Discord um, and a new yeah. route document titled The Wednesday Route. Yeah. Oh, that's funny, though. Because <laughs> usually a game takes maybe a month before something comes out that there's a route, but then any percent glitch just says, okay, there's a new route today, there's a new route tomorrow. Yeah, maybe two on Friday. Why not? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That was the Pokemon Shining Pearl 80%. Uh, Nerd, do you have anything else you would like to say? Yeah, I just want to give a few shout-outs. Uh, obviously, Aspect for co-commentating this. It was a lot of fun. Uh, T-Bat, he did the glitchless run yesterday. I also want to shout-out uh, Fawn or Fourthborn, either one. Uh, he was a huge help. Uh, with me getting as good at this category as I did. So, thank you, Ton. Uh, also, uh, Etiquette, who did the GDQ run with both Glitchless and Glitched. Awesome. And Aspect, just to make sure you're not commentating the next one, right? <laughs> no, I'll be commentating <laughs> the, uh, the Let's Go run uh, tomorrow. Okay, okay. Uh, which is going to be a very amusing one. Alright, sounds good. All right, we are going to be doing the Pokemon trading card game on the Game Boy Color from They Are Chris, and we will see you all in just a few.